In a previous video, I showed you an N95 mask under very high magnification, so you can see what the fibers look like, to have a very good understanding how the mask traps or blocks up to 95% of particulate matter that's 0.3 microns or larger. I also compared the N95 mask to a HEPA vacuum bag that's made using the same polypropylene material. Since that video has done extremely well and so many viewers were asking what other materials are best for making masks, I decided to make just one more video. The information in this video should help many people protect themselves. If you have not seen my previous video, then be sure to watch it after this video. In my other video, I not only showed you the fibers up close, but I also explained that the N95 masks have a special electrostatic treatment that was applied to the material. The purpose of the electrostatic treatment was to increase filtering efficiency. Now the way the electrostatic treatment is done is using chemicals. Now the chemicals used for this mask are approved for use in a mask because it's going to be very close to your face. In the other video, I showed you the vacuum bag, which has the same filtering efficiency as this N95 mask, and it's also electrostatically treated. Even though the same effect is created, the chemicals that are used on the vacuum bag are not necessarily considered safe, like the chemicals that were used on a mask. I think using a vacuum bag would not be a big problem, even though there is a difference in chemicals, but there were a lot of people that were concerned about the chemicals that were used for the electrostatic treatment. The most important thing is that you do not want to use a HEPA vacuum bag that is made out of fiberglass. It must be the same material that you see here, which is polypropylene fibers. The problem with the electrostatic treatment on the N95 mask or the vacuum bag is that as you clean them, you will weaken or greatly reduce that electrostatic treatment. When you reduce the electrostatic treatment, you're going to be reducing the filtering efficiency. Some people spray these with bleach, which I wouldn't do because it's too strong of a chemical and that really strips away the static charge. I recommended spraying just a light misting over the outside of the mask of 70% alcohol, but there are some tests showing that it reduces it by 25 to 50% the static charge. So there are problems with that static charge when it comes to cleaning. After my other video was uploaded, I had a company reach out to me and they very quickly sent me this material right here. It can be used for making masks. What you're looking at is a nanofiber. Just so you know, before we take a very close look at this material, I am not being paid by this company to show you this product, and I'm not going to be profiting one penny from the sale of any of this material. I'm showing you this video because this happens to be an excellent choice for making masks. As you can see, the material is just one layer, but it's actually three different layers that are bonded together. It's made by an American company, and it has the same filtering efficiency as the N95 mask. Up to 95% of the particles will be trapped or blocked by this material. Let's take a look at the data sheet for this material. Filthy's face mask material is engineered using our patent pending nanofiber technology and is highly efficient up to 95% on submicron particles, including bacteria and viruses. Over here, the construction details. Filthy face mask material is constructed from polypropylene spun bond, non-woven with a nanofiber fine filtration layer and surface layer of non-woven polyester. Over here, it says style number three layer, lightweight composite filter media, polypropylene nanofiber polyester composite filter media. Finish sonic lamination. What I really like about this material is that it has the same filtering efficiency as an N95 mask, but this material does not have an electrostatic treatment. With an N95 mask, you have to worry about weakening or damaging that electrostatic treatment. With this material here, there is nothing to damage because there is no electrostatic treatment. According to the company, there is a lot of this material available that can be purchased right away. Now over here, it just shows you the weight and it's in ounces a yard or grams per square meter. Air permeability, thickness 0.04 inch. And now this is important, the MERV rating. That's the minimum efficiency reporting value, and that's the same value that's used on your AC filters or furnace filters. And you can see it's at the highest level, 
MERS-16. Right over here you can see the listing between 0.3 microns and 10. It shows the MERV rating and it shows way at the bottom MERV-16 and way at the top is the lowest. It's going to remove the least amount of particles. Up to 95% efficient just like the N95 at 0.3 microns or larger. A lot of people are making their own masks out of cotton shirts, polyester, and over here just to show you that the filtering efficiency is not so good at all, down here is this material, 95% efficiency at removing the particles down to 0.3 micron. Over here is a microfiber dish towel, 14.5%, and these can vary these numbers a little higher or a little lower, it's just a guideline. Polyester cotton sewing fabric, 10.4%, a cotton shirt, you'd be lucky to get 10% efficiency out of, polyester dress shirt, polyester cotton tights. So you can see these people are walking around wearing these things over their mouth. When it comes down to particulate matter, bacteria or viruses, these are not going to be doing much for you. Now this testing was done using the machine you see right over here. The machine is specially designed for testing the efficiency of filters. Right here it shows you how to make the mask, which way the material goes. You can see there's very tiny little holes or openings on this side of the material and over here they're much deeper. Those are called bond points and those are areas where the material is melted together to keep all of the layers of the material together. Now you can see this face is outward and this side here goes on the inside. Because this is patent pending there are no FDA approvals for this so of course there is a disclaimer. And right here is a look at that material up close. Let's zoom in and you can see each one of those bond points. Now let's take a look at the opposite side and on this side you can see the bond points are much shallower. Okay let's take a look at both sides of this material under the microscope. Right here you're looking at the side of the fabric that has the smaller bond points. In this image here we're a little closer in as the microscope's focus is adjusted you can see the fibers get clear all the way into the depth of the fabric. Right here is the opposite side and you can see that bond point. That's where all the layers are melted together just like the N95 mask. No air will penetrate that area that's white. You can see the fibers next to that melted area are very small and densely packed. Right here is a very close look at the fibers under high magnification. With the microscope I have we're not going to have super sharp images you're always going to have that milky cloudy look as you increase magnification and as a result you won't be able to see things that are very fine. The company sent me this image you see right here taken with an electron microscope and you can see over those fibers is a very fine web. The company told me that if you were to look at an N95 mask using this electron microscope you will not see the same type of a web. That fine web is what traps the majority of extremely small particles. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.